Now, I know that you're at the Stock Thank Exchange you. today to make a presentation to investors and brokers. So I think we should start from there. Clearly, you will be talking about your half-year results. But can you just give us a sense of what you discussed today? Yes, Wally. Um, I was here to update the members of the Nigerian Stock Exchange about our plans to reorganize as a holding company. This is in line with um, the central bank requirements to separate commercial banking from non-banking business. So because we are going the holding company route, we are here to communicate to the stockbrokers about the plans and um, educate them as to the timelines for these plans. All right, we'll talk a little more about that, but let's move to the results. And of course, gross earnings up 45%, um, PBT up 8.7%, pretty mixed picture there, but can you just run us through the key points from your half-year numbers? Yes, thanks, Wale. Uh, the trend is upwards, um, so in terms of the underlying business, it's moving in the right direction. Like you said, um, gross revenues up 45%. Um, the operating expenses are up 14% as well. Um, there was pressure on the NII line with um, net interest income um, going up by just, just under 10% to 14.5. And um, this is largely due to the pressure on from the interest expense line where um, despite the fact that we are improving in our deposit mix, um, we still do have some um, expensive wholesale deposits that have contributed to uh, um, strength, you know, reducing in our margins. Um, but we believe that that trend is moving in the right direction and um, we expect to see um, the profit line also responding accordingly. Right. There's no way I can end this interview without getting your perspective on the MPC decision and of course the the impact it's going to have on the market and of course to banks like yourself some are saying it's broadly negative for banks um, perhaps a lot more for the mid-tier to smaller banks uh, than for the much larger banks but maybe we can get your perspective what is the impact on stambic ibtc's business it's going to put more pressure on you know interest expenses um, because the effect of you know the increase in the cash reserve ratio is you know, to tighten liquidity. And already we're seeing that pressure um, in the market. So like you have said, um, you know, it's going to improve, increase interest rates. We are also concerned about increasing loan defaults because you're going to find small to medium businesses, you know, as well um, having to struggle with higher interest rates. Um, in terms of our business, we continue to sweat our branches. We've improved our um, the deposit mix from a 50-50 as at year end, it's currently um, 59.41, and we want to continue to push that trend, and you know that would help us, you know, in this kind of scenario. But it is going to put certainly much more pressure on All the right. markets. Clearly, tougher times for the banks. But let's talk a bit about your funding structure because that's something that some analysts are pointing to. Uh, maybe first of all, can you speak to any plans you may have to? Um, raise new capital via bonds issue. I understand that shareholders have approved this already. Yes, we have obtained our board approval, you know, to um, raise a bond. Um, we're doing all the work that um, will enable us to go to the market, but we believe that, you know, current interest rates are such that um, it's probably not the right time to do so. Um, so we'll continue to watch the market, do all the work, and, and when it's time, the time is right, we'll press the trigger. All right, so if you're holding on on the bond issue, let's talk about the deposit growth. I see that um, compared to the levels in June 2011, deposits are, are, are marginally lower. Um, some are pointing to that as a pressure point for banks like Stambic IPTC, more of the mid middle size to the uh, small banks may face some funding pressure. Give us a sense of your, your strategy to grow deposits. When our deposits came down 14% um, to 248 billion, and this was a deliberate strategy. We let go of more expensive wholesale deposits, and um, we will continue to do so while we sweat our branch network. We intend to also drive very aggressively our mobile money strategy and all the other channels that we have alongside the branch network. So the objective is to continue to improve our deposit mix 
and ultimately get to our target, which is 70-30 in favor of um, low-cost liabilities. All right, and then loan to deposit ratio. Do you have? Can you give some guidance as to your targets in that respect? Well, we have always um, striven to be below 100%. Um, we do know what the regulatory guide is, about 80%, 80%. And, you know, we think that given our growth ambitions in this market, probably somewhere around 90, you know, we're comfortable with. All right. And let's move to another big issue in the banking sector today. Um, more so when you consider that credit growth is still somewhat sluggish, uh, many people point to cost containment as a very important strategy. Can you speak to Stambic IPTC's progress in this respect? Yes. Our cost to income ratio um, has not moved um, in the direction we would like. I mean, it's up from 73% at year end to 76 right now. Um, we continue to try and manage that aggressively, um, you know, and a key part of that strategy is that low cost liabilities. Um, but there are still some operating expenses that, you know, we need to um, manage more aggressively. All right, I want to come back to um, the whole cost structure. Uh, you've already spoken to the changes that you're planning there and, of course, what you've discussed with the market today. I understand that September 17 is the date um, that we would see the delisting of Stambic IBT as it is today and the listing of the whole co company. Um, but then there's right. the discussion around your investment banking business and how you would fund this. Um, can you speak to that as well, given the fact that clearly your businesses um, will be segregated going forward? Yes. I mean, our objective is to ensure that each business has adequate capital, you know, for its business needs. Therefore, we are taking out the investment banking business from Stambic IBTC Bank as is, and we are putting that into a newly incorporated company called Stambic IBTC Capital Limited. And Stambic IBTC Capital Limited will have an initial capital of 3.5 billion naira, which in our view is sufficient um, to drive the business um, that we currently do. All right. Thank you so much, Ella, for joining us and for sharing your perspective.